In their mind, they're thinking, okay, how long can I keep this going? What should I say next? How is it going so far? All these things like, okay, what do I say next? What do I say next? What should I do next? And all that stuff is kind of shutting them down, okay? Mentally, it's handicapping them in terms of moving things forward. Okay, what they should be doing is thinking, Hey everybody, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle and today I want to cover five big beginner mistakes that guys make with women. So over the past seven years, since 2012, I've been traveling all around the world teaching live programs, helping hundreds and thousands of men get better with women. Okay, so I've had the chance to observe many men's dating lives, to see how they interact with women in real life, to see their text conversations, all this stuff. And I've been just immersed in this stuff for the past decade, okay? I've been on all the forums, I've been thinking about this stuff a great deal, friends with lots of guys that are doing this, and many, many clients that are doing this as well. So I've extracted some of the biggest ones that we've all run into, and if you haven't yet, you should be prepared for how to deal with them, okay? So before we continue, I encourage you to please press the subscribe button below, and make sure you press the notification bell so you get alerted of my new free content every Sunday through Thursday, as well as my YouTube live notification, and those are gonna be at 4 p.m. Eastern time on Sundays. So number one, the first big mistake that guys make is putting girls on a pedestal, okay? What does that mean? It means that they think here is the guy's value, okay, their own personal value, and then here is where the woman's value happens to be, okay? And it's usually due to her physical attractiveness. So they think, okay, this woman is really hot, okay? I must not be good enough. I'm only average looks, or I'm only a little bit above average looks, or I don't have that much cool stuff going on or I'm a shy guy or I'm a nervous guy. So I'm gonna look at her like she's way up here and that I'm way down here. Okay, now the problem with that is it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, when you walk up to a woman, especially a woman of beauty, and you are unsure of yourself and you think that she's way out of your league and all these things, that's gonna be conveyed through your mannerisms, through your body language, through your vocal tonality, through your expressions, all these little subtle cues that are signaling to the woman that you don't think you are good enough. And she's going to respond accordingly in a negative way, okay? Conversely, you should think that your value is at 100 out of 100 in terms of its potential at all times, okay? That means no matter what happens externally, okay, you should be drawing a brick wall. No matter what happens externally, nothing can penetrate through that brick wall, okay? Your, your value stays at 100 out of 100. And you shouldn't think that girls are out of your league, okay? Even if a girl is incredibly attractive and you haven't had an attractive girl in the past, it's not a good mindset to have and you shouldn't worship her or put her on a pedestal. If you were taking into account all the, all the rest of the parts of her life versus your life, odds are that you might have a lot higher, greater overall value, okay? So a lot of clients that I've had, they have an awesome job, they have a lot of cool hobbies, they speak multiple languages, they have advanced degrees, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They've traveled the world. And a lot of these super pretty girls, okay, maybe she didn't go to college, maybe she's a single mom, Maybe she hasn't traveled anywhere outside of her home city or her hometown. Okay, maybe this drunk 21-year-old that's dancing out at the bar with a little outfit on maybe doesn't deserve to be worshipped in the way that a lot of guys are worshipping her. Okay, so stop putting girls on a pedestal and stop placing their perceived value at a much higher level than yours. That's number one. Number two, don't make approaching a big deal. Okay, when I talk about approaching, I'm talking about walking up to a stranger and starting a conversation. A lots of guys think, what if she has a boyfriend? What if she doesn't like me? What if I'm not her type? What if other people see and it's embarrassing? What if she rejects me? How am I gonna feel about myself? What are others gonna think if she rejects me? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All this negative self-talk and guys make it too big of a deal about walking up to a stranger and approaching her, okay? If it's during the daytime, it's very easy to just stop a girl and say, hey, I wanted to meet you, what's your name? During a nightclub or bar scenario, I use the same opener. I say, hi, I wanted to meet you, what's your name? The way to fix this one is to follow something called the three second rule. The way this works is you see a girl you want to talk to and you give yourself no more than three seconds to go in and talk to her. Okay, so this is gonna stop all the negative self-talk. It's gonna stop all your fear. And I have a video that you can check out up here, okay, about how even dating coaches get scared. I feel that fear and that anxiety even after sleeping with over a thousand girls. Okay, not every time I've conditioned myself to ignore it, but it's something that's biologically programmed into us. And I talked about in that video how it comes from being in smaller tribal times and potentially being killed by a man that already has that woman or by that woman rejecting you and not being able to pass on your genes, okay, because you look stupid to the rest of the tribe. So follow the three second rule. Don't make approaching a big deal. You see the girl, you go in, okay? That's number two. 
Number three, I see a lot of guys all around the world that I've coached being very afraid to be sexual with their verbals, okay? And what I mean by that is they're afraid to flirt or kind of break out of that platonic role, okay? So when you're having an interaction with a stranger or even if you're on a date, okay, and you're getting to know a girl, by just keeping things like completely platonic, completely friendly on a friendly level and not taking things into the sexual realm, what's going to happen there is that the girl is going to see you as like a friend, okay? She's gonna see you platonically, she's gonna think that you're either too much of a baby or that you're not interested in having a romantic thing going on because you're not expressing it, okay? So don't be afraid to make a sexual innuendo, to twist something she said into something sexual. Don't be afraid to make a sexual joke, okay? If you happen to offend the woman or you're doing it too often, she will let you know and you can just pull back, okay, and keep it a little bit more toned down. But you wanna be making sure that you're flirting, okay, when you're in these interactions. Either if it's a new interaction or you're on a date, you wanna be making sexual innuendos, you want to be twisting things sexual when you can. Number four, it goes by the same token, and that is going to be being afraid to be physical or, or not being physical, okay? By the same token of not expressing flirtation verbally and by not making those moves, so to speak, where you're flirting and saying verbally escalating things, okay, in a sexual way, guys are also being too afraid to be physical, which means when they're talking to a girl, they're afraid to make physical contact. They're afraid to put their hand around the small of the girl's back, okay? They're afraid to do little leg touches. You can do these minor physical escalation things in an interaction that are kind of building up as the interaction goes on. Now, the reason why that's important is that it takes you out of the friend zone as well, okay? If you want to get friend zoned, the quickest way to do that is to not be sexual with your verbals and to not be physical at all when you're in the interaction, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna to need to implement the flirtation and the physicality. And I've seen interactions with clients turn around completely, okay, do a complete 180 where the guy is like basically has this distance between himself and the girl he's talking to and he's talking about really boring things, not being flirtatious at all, not saying any sexual things. And then I'll come in and I'll say, man, you gotta amp it up. He'll close the gap between him and the girl. Now he's being physical with the girl. Now he's saying sexual things. And now the girl sees him as a romantic interest and a potential sexual option for that evening, okay, or for a later date. And the whole game changes, okay? So those are really important lessons the beginners need to learn. And lastly, number five, not moving things forward is another big mistake the guys are making, okay? And what I mean by that is lots of guys are having conversations that lead to nowhere, okay? So they get into the interaction, they've gotten past the open, they've done the approach, and they say, okay, in their mind, they're thinking, okay, how long can I keep this going? What should I say next? How is it going so far? All these things like, okay, what do I say next? What do I say next? What should I do next? And all that stuff is kind of shutting them down, okay? Mentally, it's handicapping them in terms of moving things forward, okay? What they should be doing is thinking, how can I move this girl away from her friends at the nightclub? How can I get into a makeout with this girl? Okay, you wanna be progressing things either that you're taking her home in a particular situation, or that you're building things up so that you can set up a date at a future time. When you're setting up the date for a future time, basically you're just building interaction so you set up a frame, as it's called, so you're setting up an exact day, time, and location, and you want to be moving things forward in that direction. I can't go over all the details in this video about how you should be moving each interaction forward and all the specifics, but the rest of the videos on my channel go through that stuff extensively about how you should be running a night game interaction, how you should be running a daytime interaction, all that stuff, okay? I'll put the link up here for how to run a night game interaction so that you will know what to do at bars and clubs. Make sure you watch that. And other than that, those are the five things. So don't put women on a pedestal. Don't make the approach a big deal. Don't be afraid to be sexually flirtatious, okay? Don't be afraid to have physicality, okay, with the girl so that you're not friend zoned and then don't have conversations that lead to nowhere, meaning that you should move things forward. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope it was very helpful for you. And as always, if this was helpful, press the like button below. Also make sure to subscribe if you have not yet subscribed and press the notification bell. That will alert you of my five free new videos every Sunday through Thursday each week, as well as my YouTube live stream every Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, okay? And on the live stream, that will be your chance to ask me anything. It goes for about two to three hours. You can ask me any kind of questions you want about pickup and game and seduction. And I will also help with any subject matter and situation that you guys have going on. That's your chance to interact with me directly. So thanks again for watching. This is John Anthony and take care. Thank you.